it's Monday, I'm pretty much wearing a rug, and it's time for Quotes of the Week. Well, what is up guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Gospel Simplicity, a place where we are passionate about the beautiful simplicity and transformative power of the gospel. We're out to talk about life, Jesus, and the journey of faith in a real, honest, and open way. So if that at all interests you and you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe down below to become a part of what we're doing here on this channel. Well, as I said, it's time for quotes of the week. That's what we do on Mondays. It's a Monday, so we're going to do it. And if you're new to this series, it's basically a time where I share some of my favorite quotes from books I've been reading in the past week because I'm a student at Moody Bible Institute. I'm a theology major, which means my whole life is spent reading books. So in order to make the most out of that, I mean, I'd love it, not to say like it's a burden to me, but in order to be able to share that with you guys and to be able to just get more out of it myself, I decided to do this series where we share some of my favorite things that I'm reading. So without further ado, here are just a few quotes from this week. The first comes from a book called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People by a guy named Pete Gregg. I'll write out his name and you tell me how you'd pronounce it. Sorry if I butchered that. But anyway, it's a great book. I just started it and here is what the quote says. I've come to believe that 99% of prayer is just showing up, making the effort to become consciously present to the God who is constantly present to us. And when I read that, instantly grabbed my highlighter. I was like, yep, that's a good one. I'll be sharing it. And what, I mean, outside of just the really nice like play on words he's kind of got there with consciously present and constantly present, I think he highlights a really important point that, you know, not just in prayer, but in a lot of areas of our life, especially in our spiritual life, we overcomplicate things. And part of the reason for this channel existing is to kind of help with that, right? Like gospel simplicity. We're about taking these things that can seem really complex and making them simple and getting down to the core and being reminded of the beautiful simplicity of it. And prayer is a great example of that. Sometimes we go, you know, how should I pray? Like, what's the right way to do it? And, you know, it's no surprise that Jesus' disciples once asked him, like, Lord, teach us to pray because sometimes we struggle. And I think they saw something in Jesus that was attractive in the way that he prayed because we see that we have a God who, you know, Jesus, who is God, still prayed. And that's amazing. And that would take more time to explain theologically. But just think about that. But really the key to prayer is just showing up and becoming aware of God's presence, right? Like prayer doesn't usher in God's presence, just as worship doesn't bring God's presence there, but it helps us become aware of the truth, of the reality that God is always present to us. So if you struggle to pray, I'd really encourage you, don't overthink it. Just carve out time to be still, recognize God's presence, and just share your heart with God. Cast your cares upon God, as the Bible tells us. Like, just just do it. Just start. Don't overthink it. 99% is just showing up. Thanks, Pete Gregg, for that. I really enjoyed it. All right, the next quote for you guys is from a book called Worship Matters by Bob Coughlin, which I believe I've quoted once before, but this is a really good quote and really just spoke to me. And it says this, imagine the effect if church growth referred to churches growing in their understanding of the gospel, personal godliness, involvement in the church, and their heart for the lost rather than simply numbers. And you know, this is a quote that, I don't know how much this speaks to you, but it really speaks to me because I'm a person, you know, my, my dream is to plant a church one day and to pastor it and to see it grow and be healthy and vibrant. But something I've been realizing is just how easy it is for pride to get caught up in ministry and how we can kind of worship numbers. And I'm not saying every big church does that. I'm a big church guy. I come from big churches. I attend a pretty big church. And I'd love, you know, by God's grace to pastor a large church one day. But we have to remember that just numbers isn't necessarily an indicator of success. That, you know, sometimes having a lot of people in your church could really just mean you're good at marketing or you have a lot of talent in oratory and you have a lot of talent in musicianship, but maybe you're not really focused on the word of God. Maybe you're not focused on glorifying God. And I, I do not say this because I hate, I, I, I don't like when people do this. I'm not saying that that's the case with every big church or even the majority, but it's really important that I think we remember that our goal isn't just to pack out auditoriums, but our goal is to see people grow in their relationship 
with God. And it can be really easy to overlook that because that's harder to measure. It's easy to measure how many people were here on Sunday and we can get that like hit of dopamine, like, ah, we did it. Or like, oh, we can make these goals and we're goal oriented people for a lot of us. But we want to go deep with people. We don't want to just scatter widely and just see how many people we can get to just show up to a church service and not grow from there. But we want to take the people that we have and make, help them grow. And yes, if we do that, we will also see numeric growth. I, I truly believe that if you are leading a growing congregation, meaning the people are growing in their walk with the Lord, then it is a natural byproduct that the congregation should grow as well. Because if they're truly growing, they should be inviting, they should be making a difference in the community, and that will attract people, and that will help a church grow. But I think it's just a good thing to think about, especially for people who are perhaps interested in ministry. All right, the next quote I have for you guys is from a book that I've quoted many times and will unfortunately be the last quote from this book because I actually finished it this past week. And that is The Pursuit of Excellence by George Sweeting. And this quote says, self has always been public enemy number one to Christian maturity. Short, sweet, to the point, and oh, so true. I'm sure if you've been following Jesus for any amount of time, you can probably relate to this, that if you're being honest, the biggest hindrance in your growth isn't what is happening around you, isn't what other people say about you, isn't what other people do to you, but it's really yourself. It's your own selfish desires. It's your own problems with sin. It's those areas in your life that you haven't surrendered to God. Our own self is often public enemy number one to our own growth. I actually made a video not too long ago called Three Words to Change Your Life. And it's about this phrase, die to yourself. Because I really believe that a very core part of following Jesus is self-denial. Is saying that, you know what, my life isn't to be lived with myself as the sole benefactor of it. Which is a phrase I like to use a lot, but if that didn't quite make sense, what I'm saying is, our lives shouldn't be lived in such a way that we're the person that benefits from it most. Our lives should be given in service to others. The fruit of our life should be in the lives of others. The good things we produce should be for others, not primarily for ourselves. because we serve a God who laid down his life for us, the ultimate sacrifice. And he calls us to also live in a self-sacrificial manner, putting others ahead of ourselves and putting him above ourselves. Such a good quote. Very thankful to George Sweeting for that. All right, the last quote that I have for you guys today is by an evangelist named Henry Varley, and it was actually quoted in another book that I was reading, but it says this, the world has yet to see what God can do with and for and through and in a man who is fully consecrated to him, which is to say a man who is fully surrendered, fully given over to him. And this is actually a quote that greatly moved and inspired the founder of this very school where I'm sitting right now, D.L. Moody. And he heard this quote and he said, by God's grace, I want to be that man. And I want to challenge all of us, wherever you're at in your life, the world has yet to see what God can do with a person who is fully given over to him. And let us strive to be that person. Let us say, God, I want to surrender my will to your will. Because that is when God moves in powerful, powerful ways. That is when we will see real change, real fruit from our lives, and real transformation, not only in our life, but in our community, in our family, and ultimately in the world. And the key isn't just learning new things. The key isn't just getting better. It's fully surrendering ourselves to God and saying, God, here is my life. Do with it what you will. That is the key to success in Christian life. That is what excellence is looks like. So guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making these videos. And I want to say thank you to those of you, not only who have been watching these videos, but who have left comments, who have sent me messages, and just really encouraged me in this. That means so much to me. I love hearing from you guys. And it means the world to me that it's impacting some of your lives, um, even if just in a small way. So thank you so much for that encouragement. I really appreciate you guys. If you did enjoy this video, click like, leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought. Share with me some of your favorite quotes from what you're reading or from what you've heard maybe in a sermon or wherever I'd love to hear it as always if you haven't subscribed already I'd really encourage you to do so down below to become a part of what we're doing here on this channel but until next time I want to encourage you to go out and love God and love others because that will change the world peace love you guys so much see you next time